Hi, thanks for joining me in this status update about JavaVex and Gluon. Today, I want to show an end-to-end -end proof of concept that we created at Gluon. I'll show a Java client application that runs on embedded and mobile devices with telematics functionality. It is connected to the cloud and another Java application that monitors the situation. But before that, let's give a quick status update on JavaVex. So JavaVex 17 is currently under um, active development. And there are a number of uh, new committers and reviewers active in the JavaVex community, which speeds up the development process uh, significantly. At this point, already more than 120 issues have been fixed since the previous uh, 16 release, and that's uh, quite a lot uh, uh, for our six month release cadence. Those issues are uh, partially new issues, but also some long-standing bugs that are uh, finally tackled and gone. We also noticed an increased interest in uh, uh, ARC64 uh, systems. We already added the M1 uh, silicon uh, support and experimental work on uh, Windows ARC64 is uh, ongoing. Um, and JavaVex uh, 17 as a whole is still on track for release in um, September. Uh, 2021. So if we look at the number of uh, SDK downloads from the Gluon HQ website, which does not which do not include the Maven artifacts that are downloaded from Wave Central, um, we see that um, the JavaVex downloads show a healthy community, uh, increasing month over month. Um, May is not finished yet, so that number will uh, rise. And um, it's not just the downloads that are increasing, it's also the number of contributions from the wider ecosystem that is really um, uh, going up. There are also more third-party JavaX libraries and the existing JavaX libraries uh, frequently got new uh, releases. And to make it easy to start with JavaX, the JavaX Maven and Gradle plugins, together with the IDE plugins, are actively developed and new archetypes are created to make it even easier to start with JavaFX development. Now, a couple of words about the long-term support program that, ja that Gluon offers for JavaFX. This long-term support program is based on JavaFX 11. So if you want to stick to that stable long-term supported release, but still get the benefits from the newer releases and the bug fixes and security patches, you can subscribe to the JavaFX long-term support from Gluon. Our customers get access to the long-term support builds which contain those security fixes, bug fixes, and some selected backports. And you also get access to the Gluon core team that is actively involved in the development of OpenJFX. We also provide our customers assistance with filing and follow-up follow of uh, issues in the Java bug system and making sure that they can prioritize whatever they find important, making sure that whatever they want is on the roadmap. And those customers are, in fact, the companies that are funding the development of OpenJFX. So they play a crucial role in the ecosystem. If you want to know more about the long-term support program from Gluon, go to https gluonhq.com slash LTS. Now, let's move to Embedded now. ARM processors are increasingly getting more popular. And that is uh, um, both the ARM32 as well as the ARM64 uh, processors. But also on desktop, we see an increased interest in ARM. For example, Linux, macOS, and Windows already run on ARM64 CPUs as well. Now on Embedded, ARM64 is popular, but ARM32 is popular as well. And the good thing is that JavaFX runs on those systems. So the same JavaFX that runs on a Windows system also runs on the um, uh, embedded systems with ARM32 or ARM64 processors. When I say the same JavaFX, I refer to the high-level JavaFX APIs that are used in applications. Those are completely the same. So the, if you have an ARM32 system, then you can run JavaFX by running a JVM on that ARM32 system and run the JavaFX application inside the ARM to inside the JVM. If you have an ARC64 uh, system, you can do that as well, of course, but you also have the additional capability of running your application as a standalone and statically compiled and linked executable. 
And that is done by using Bluemon Substrate, which is linked with your IDE and plugins. And Bluemon Substrate will under the hood use ColVM native image, which compiles the Java bytecode to native code. And that makes the application uh, faster, uh, it consumes less memory, and it starts up immediately. So that's an additional benefit that's um, available if you're using Arc64 systems. If you want to learn more about this, you can visit docs.bluemonetsq.com. Now, JavaVex does not only run on those embedded systems, it also runs extremely fast. And that is due to a number of reasons. First of all, JavaVex already has support for hardware acceleration. And on Linux and Mac, for example, um, we use the OpenGL pipeline or OpenGL ES, uh, on, uh, which is also used on iOS and uh, Android. Now, apart from that, Gluon created the low-level library that links the OpenGL ES rendering system with the low-level Linux uh, drivers for DRM and KMS. That supports multiple displays, support for planes, uh, overlays, and hardware rotation, and cursor uh, support if your hardware uh, has support uh, for this. So it's time to show a demo now, where we will sh show a single Raspberry Pi connected to two screens, a small touchscreen and a an, um, large HDMI screen. So what we want to show here is this quick demo of the telematics uh, proof of concept. The Raspberry Pi is connected to a 7-inch touchscreen where you see that uh, I'm uh, playing the game and the large HDMI display at the top. And the large display shows the map with the current location of the car and the drive controls. And meanwhile, while the driver is looking at the map, children in the back can play a game using the touchscreen. The driver application is using Gluon Mobile and both the driver controls and the game are using uh, Gluon uh, Mobile controls. This is a single application with two screens and the Gluon DRM driver for leveraging the um, hardware capabilities of the platform. So that is uh, um, on uh, Embedded, and we will talk more about Embedded in a later um, uh, update. But of course, because this is JavaVex, the same application also runs on mobile devices. So we can have a look at how the same application runs on an Android uh, phone. Um, and this is uh, my Nexus 5 phone where the same application, at least the map part, is running. And um, you can see that the um, uh, quality of the application is uh, um, uh, pretty good. So 100% the same code. That's, I think, important. And of course, we have uh, um, the same uh, application on iOS as well. And uh, if you look how fast it starts up, you can um, immediately see one of the benefits of using ColVM native image. It's uh, uh, because it's compiled ahead of time, doesn't need to warm up the JVM, it starts immediately. And it's a um, pretty uh, nice application. And again, very similar to, to what you saw in the telematics uh, demo. So the embedded and the mobile components are um, very similar. So what do we offer here at Gluon? The DRM library that we demonstrated is free for development and evaluation. So if you're um, evaluating it or you want to just create some proof of concept, you can use it for free. And, uh, um, and uh, it's very, very useful if you're not sure yet if you uh, want to use it in production or not. If you want to use it for an open source production uh, project, you can, use, you can keep using it for free. And if you want to use this in a commercial uh, product that you are shipping and distributing to customers, then um, we can give you a commercial license. We are also using Blue on Mobile, and Blue on Mobile contains a number of components that allows you to quickly develop a mobile application without spending much time in creating mobile-specific controls uh, and so. And that is a developer-based license that you can get from us. If you're interested in this, contact Sirius at BlueNSQ.com. So, so far for the uh, clients, um, but what about the cloud? Because we know that clients are cool, embedded, mobile, desktop. It's, it's, it's pretty cool to create uh, nice applications for those. But 
most applications need data from the cloud or they need access to uh, cloud functionality. And of course, the data that goes to the cloud should come from somewhere, namely from um, clients. So the connection between the cloud and clients is extremely important in modern IT. And there we have Bloom CloudLink, which allows you to easily connect your Java client applications with cloud services. You can operate Blue on CloudLink using a web interface, and there you can configure, for example, what data do you want to share between the client and the uh, servers, and uh, what functionality do you want to uh, make available on the cloud and expose that to the to the client, and then invoke a remote function for um, calling that functionality in a serverless container or so. So the integration between cloud and client is crucial. Um, to demonstrate that, we created a simple uh, fleet application which connects to Blue on CloudLink. And the demos that you saw before uh, with the embedded scenario and the mobile scenario, they sent their position information to Blue on CloudLink as well. And the fleet application is going to retrieve this information from Blue on CloudLink. Now, this has to go real time. So we're not using uh, slow um, uh, or connections with much overhead like HTTP. This is really uh, a binary protocol that goes uh, very fast and that can scale very well. So um, I'll quickly show the, um, the fleet application, which is uh, um, a Java Vex application running on a desktop. And you see that uh, there are different cars and one is moving and you can select that car and get more information. And so, so this is just a JavaX application connected to uh, Blue on Cloud Link. And because it's using Blue on Maps as well, you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, track and pan the map and so. So Blue on Cloud Link, as I said, synchronizes the data between different clients and can securely store data in the cloud in uh, the cloud of your choice. So Bloom CloudLink interoperates with the major uh, different uh, cloud vendors. So it it is not a replacement for um, for data storage or um, similar functionality in the cloud. It connects your clients to the cloud without requiring a direct uh, link uh, to the cloud. It also stores passwords and so in the cloud and not on the client. And it can also execute functions on behalf of a client in the cloud. So in that case, on the mobile application or on the client desktop application, you simply invoke um, uh, a function with a name and some parameters, and the real execution is then done in the cloud. It is available as a SaaS solution or also on-premise. So from an architecture point, this looks like follows. The client application, desktop or mobile or embedded, does not directly connect to the backend application, it does not contain the credentials that give access to the backend application, but it talks to Blue and CloudLink, which is hosted in a cloud. And then from Blue and CloudLink, you where you configured the configuration using the dashboard, which is a web interface, um, it goes to the backend application in a secure uh, way. So that is all uh, that I wanted to say today about our um, telematics demo our embedded uh, mobile and cloud uh, work. Um, of course, we are um, making lots of progress in Gluon, and I wanted to show you um, a, a nice project that we've been working on uh, more recently, and uh, um, that, is, um, that we are going to make available uh, soon. So what you see here, yeah, that this looks very much like the, um, the typical and well-known uh, ensemble uh, demo. In Java FX, and we added a, a, a clock uh, there, and um, it looks like a Java application, a Java FX application uh, on uh, desktop or on uh, embedded or on uh, mobile. But what this really is is the same Java FX application, but then running inside the browser. So we are combining uh, Java FX and WebGL to uh, do this rendering. So. This is uh, finally the um, yeah, Java Vex on that last platform um, where we didn't have that uh, yet.
So what do we do here? So this is really 100% uh, pure JavaFX running inside uh, the browser uh, context. And how is this done? So the rendering is uh, again using the JavaFX Prism pipeline, which leverages uh, um, uh, OpenGL. But this time we ported it to leverage WebGL, and the, um, we make sure that the, the native code, typically the C code executing OpenGL, is uh, uh, now replaced with JavaScript code executing uh, WebGL, and therefore that uh, that code runs inside the browser. The Java bytecode itself is being transpiled to uh, JavaScript and executed in the native uh, browser engine, in the native JavaScript browser engine, which can be Chrome, Firefox, uh, Safari. Uh, we currently use Vector Browser as a uh, transpiler uh, for transpiling the Java bytecode to the JavaScript. And together with the uh, WebGL rendering components that uh, uh, we have, we managed to keep the Java Vex API 100% uh, similar between. Um, desktop development, embedded mobile or web uh, development. All of this um, will be open source and uh, uh, we highly welcome contributions. We really think that this can be a nice uh, community uh, effort and it brings us closer to the point uh, of Java everywhere. Thank you for attending and I hope you learned something. And if you want to know more about Loon or about uh, Java FX, feel free to um, contact us and um, get in touch.